Welcome to Mustangs to Fear. My name is Tom Peters. Uh, today we're going to be talking about uh, 1967 Fastback. Uh, this particular color is Gulfstream Aqua. Uh, we're going to be talking about the undercar uh, side of this. First off, you know, it all starts with a firm foundation. This particular car has our long frame in it. Uh, the interesting thing about our long frame is that it's made of two by three uh, box steel as opposed to the stamp steel that came uh, from Ford way, way back in the mid 60s. Okay, so it's definitely more accommodative to the high horsepower engines that we're seeing uh, more prevalent today. Okay, so with our long frame, uh, the long frame itself is actually uh, a little bit wider than stock. And, and the benefit to that is that uh, it gives you A, more room for the headers, B, uh, it gives you a much stronger, uh, uh, more firm ride, if you will, uh, because the wheels are outside, uh, a little more wider track uh, than we would normally see uh, with the stock frame. And uh, thirdly, uh, it just gives you additional strength. So uh, as we go through here, we've also got uh, tie downs that are welded on. So for those times that uh, need to be trailered, you've got that option as well. In keeping with the uh, mantra of we work with what Ford gave us, uh, we leave on this Coyote 5.0, we leave the alternator right where Ford put it. And to accommodate that, we actually have a notch uh, cut out into the frame uh, so that it can stay right where Ford put it, okay? That makes us a little bit different than other customers or other providers, if you will. Uh, who have a tendency to want to move this alternator around the engine somewhere else. Uh, we leave it right where Ford put it. The oil filter would normally come in contact with the power rack here. So we have an adapter that moves at 90 degrees. Uh, and so you can uh, uh, get your Coyote right where it should be and not have to do a remote type of uh, oil filter. Um, here's our power rack as well. This is just a standard off-the-shelf power rack. Uh, our power steering lines, you'll notice that they are braided uh, as well. And then over here we use the Vintage Air uh, front runner system that integrates the uh, power steering pump as well as the uh, AC compressor as well. Follow me over here. Uh, you'll see that this particular car has our, our air conditioning system in it, uh, the old air system. In order to keep the engine bay as clean as possible, we route the AC lines outside of the engine bay. Uh, and then uh, Carl had decided to use our frame stiffener. Uh, and we use that much less for strength than this particular uh, application. We actually use it to tie the... Uh, uh, the AC lines too, okay? This frame is actually good to, oh gosh, it's probably good to seven, 800, 900 horse that we know of, okay? Um, the frame stiffener in this case, it really is used just for tying up the AC lines. Uh, we normally sell the frame, frame, uh, the frame stiffener uh, for those people that use just the IFS only without the long frame, uh, and uh, so they're using their stock frame uh, with the IFS, and so this is a supplement towards that, uh, to get that car as stiff as possible, to keep everything locked down right where it should be. Now, one of the issues that we have with the uh, Coyote and the 10-quart pan is that the pan actually comes below this uh, cross member, okay? And so um, recognizing that it is plastic and below this cross member, uh, we've developed a skid plate that will absorb a medium to light strike uh, on this. That would be for like uh, curbs, uh, small animals, you know, that, that come up on the road. Uh, and so it works in conjunction with our long frame uh, on that. Uh, as we look at the suspension itself, we use QA1 
10 inch springs, double adjustable shocks, a Mustang II uh, drop, two inch drop spindle, okay? Willwood brakes, and these Willwood brakes are either in the four piston or the six piston, okay? The standard uh, is generally four piston, if you will. Uh, the control, upper and lower control arms are, are proprietary for, uh, they go with our suspension as well. But the consumable items, you know, like the shocks, uh, the ball joints, those are all off the shelf. Over here, uh, you'll notice our Coyote long tube headers uh, that work in conjunction with the Coyote and our frame uh, as well. Now, the advantage of, of ours is that we know that they bolt up, okay? Uh, with many other headers that are on the market, you have the tendency to have to uh, hammer them in order to get them in place. But we've engineered them so that they will bolt right up. That we also do is the Vortex uh, undercoating. It's actually a bed liner per se, uh, but we use it as undercoating. Uh, it does a great job. Uh, in terms of protecting the underbody from you know, stone chips and, and that kind of stuff. Over here, we have our uh, MTF transmission bracket. Uh, the cool thing about this one is that, is that it's a universal fit and it slides anywhere along this frame and you just bolt it up wherever it needs to be uh, to accommodate a wide variety of transmissions. Now, given that this one is the uh, 10 speed, we actually developed an adapter that bolts on to this transmission bracket uh, as a second adapter to accommodate this 10 speed. Now, in keeping in our mantra of working with what Ford gave us, we have managed to put this Coyote and this 10 speed underneath the tunnel without cutting the tunnel. That's right, we've done it. Now, I will say this, the clearance between the transmission and the tunnel is about a quarter of an inch, okay? And there are two manufacturing bosses uh, on the transmission case itself that you'll have to trim, uh, light trim only, they're non-structural, uh, to make that happen. Uh, but once you do that, it'll bolt right up, okay? Now, the other thing to think about is that if you're redoing a car and you're thinking about the Coyote 10 speed, uh, there is a uh, uh, an OEM bracket, transmission bracket at the entrance of the tunnel, you'll need to remove that, okay, to allow as much room as possible uh, for your uh, retrofit, uh, for your swap, okay? Uh, you want that uh, uh, large enough, wide enough, smooth enough uh, to accommodate uh, a wide variety of transmissions. Uh, so, uh, as we come around to the back of the car, this one features our Watts 4-link, and uh, as part of that, the centerpiece of that really is the, the Ford 9-inch, which, which as we all know is the bad boy on the block in terms of strength and durability, okay? And so we pair that then with our Watts link setup. We utilize this in the uh, stock location for the old spring perch on the front, okay? And then with the, uh, the the Watts link is actually on the top of uh, the differential as opposed to being on the back where most people put that, okay? It's a necessary thing to have. We'd rather not see it. Uh, and so along with that, then we have uh, our Watts uh, frame rails. These rails uh, slide right over the rear frame rails uh, that Ford provided, okay? So it kind of keeps with our mantra of we work with what Ford gave us. Uh, and so what you'll have to do then, this is a pretty snug fit, you'll have to actually use a dead blow hammer and tap them into place. And then we supply along with our kit, uh, the grade eight bolts uh, that you'll have to drill and uh, bolt these up. Some people will uh, use a stitch weld uh, along with that, along with the, uh, the bolts as well. Uh, I think that's really more of a comfort factor than it really is uh, for strength. Uh, this particular car has uh, our mini tubs as well. And our mini tubs, as I said, will stay outside of the rear frame rail, uh, which allows you to keep your stock interior, but it also uh, allows you to run a wider tire. 
This particular car has uh, running a uh, 285 40 uh, on a 10 and a half inch wheel. And without rolling the lip, uh, we actually have uh, three fourths of an inch on the inner and the outer uh, for clearance on that. Uh, this is an 18 inch wheel. Uh, you can also run a 17 inch wheel as well, just depending on what you wanna do. Uh, because we relocate the battery to the trunk, uh, we put these external terminals here at, for a battery tender or for jump starting, uh, just so in case you have a, a rear trunk uh, remote uh, access open, battery's dead, can't get it to open, you can always jump it from here uh, as well, okay? Uh, in addition to the Watts 4 link, we have our uh, 20 gallon aluminum gas tank. Uh, this is something that will fit and drop right into place. Once again, we work with what Ford gave us. Uh, this has internal baffles in it and uh, it, it is set up for Coyote uh, as well uh, because the Coyote requires a return line. And uh, we sell the, the fuel line kit uh, and the tank with the pressure regulator, okay? We mount all that stuff here in the back uh, as well, and there's your drain plug just in case. So as we come around to the back of the car, uh, you'll notice our 304 stainless rear exhaust uh, tips. They're slant cut, uh, as well as uh, these are nice 285-40 uh, tires. These are Continentals, uh, the Contatrack uh, tires. Nice broad shoulder, but in, res in relation to the rest of the car, it's proportional. You know, it's beefy, it's got a nice shoulder to it, but it's not overpowering all at the same time. 20 gallon aluminum gas tank with internal baffles featuring an aeromotive 340 liter fuel pump uh, as well. And you can see our QA1 double adjustable shocks and springs. Uh, and it actually has a three position uh, bracket here so you can adjust the ride height, the body height of the car uh, so it matches the front and kind of matches the personality and the theme of the car. You know, if you want it up in the air or you want it slammed to the ground, uh, this suspension will allow for that wide variety uh, of looks that, that people you know, will, will crave.